significant TV, significant stories, significant entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and joining me in the studio today is Colleen Bracken, founder and president of Bracken Leadership Incorporated. Colleen, welcome to the show. Thank you, Fran. It's great to see you again, and I yes. so appreciate your having me. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. Well, first of all, just on a personal basis, mm -hmm. love the color coordination. Oh. <laughs> we were talking about that earlier, and I wanted to acknowledge it. Thank because you. as you and I both know, conversation and connection is all personal. Mm -hmm. It's all personal. It is, and, and thank you. And yes. that boosts my confidence as we get started, so I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> terrific, <laughs> terrific. You have a great story, Colleen. You have been in the coaching business for a number of years. Mm -hmm. um, you are a born listener, you're a born leader, and you help people with both of those skills. Mm -hmm. Can you take us back, though, to when you were maybe deciding when it was time for you to go out on your own mm -hmm. and be your own boss, um, chart your own course? Yeah, yeah. That decision was helped along by some <laughs> circumstances. Um, I'll say that uh, I began my career actually in sales. So I worked in sales in a number, a couple of different industries, and, and most recently before I left that and started out on my own, I was working for other consulting companies that did organizational development and coaching. So I had a lot of great experience in that sense. Uh, and as a salesperson, <clears throat> I was working from home. Mm -hmm. I was driving the business. Right. So. I was really responsible in some sense for my own business, prioritizing, reaching out, you know, creating relationships from nothing, fostering those, growing the business, meeting targets, managing my own time, overcoming uh, failures and setbacks, mm -hmm. of which there were more than a few. Uh, and <laughs> oh, that's life. Yeah, remember. that's right. That's okay. right. I feel that's like maybe a better person. Uh, and uh, and so I really developed a lot of the characteristics and the skills and even the confidence mm -hmm. to be able to to run something on my own. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was very happy actually uh, working for a terrific company called Achieve Global, and this was mm -hmm. back um, around uh, 2000. I always laugh, we have to say turn of the century, but this time we actually mean this one. <laughs> That's right. It makes me sound too old. So, uh, and the company I was working for, Achieve Global, was uh, purchased by another organization. Uh, and that organization did a lot of, made a lot of changes, and they invited me to uh, take on a certain role that I wasn't interested in. And at that time, I had already been through my coach training. And I knew at some point I would probably want to go out on my own. And so I was able to negotiate something with them that really worked for them and really worked for me mm -hmm. and gave me a kind of nice soft ramp mm -hmm. into operating as an independent consultant. Mm -hmm. So I did that for a number of years uh, just as a freelance consultant and executive mm -hmm. coach. Uh, and then if you ask, I'll tell you the story now or a different time about how, what made me end up actually growing the company. Well, tell it now mm -hmm. because this whole concept of a soft ramp there are some entrepreneurs that just sort of take the leap of faith um, and others that are accidental entrepreneurs, but mm. they don't have the convenience um, of a soft ramp. Yeah. What was the soft ramp? Yeah. And can you tell us how you negotiated that? Maybe not all the particulars, mm -hmm. but that is a skill in and of itself. It is, it is. Yeah. And I think, again, probably the negotiation piece was uh, cultivated through mm -hmm. many years of sales experience. Mm -hmm. I had a sense that it was time for me to go on my own. I looked at what did this business need from me? What did the organization need right now? They invited me into a certain role. They didn't, it was Northeast Regional Sales Director. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> uh, I had the experience for that. I knew they needed someone, so, and I knew I wanted to get out at a certain time. So what I did was I negotiated with them that I would hire my replacement and train them. Mm -hmm. And I would also help them to staff the whole new region. So uh, they kind of wanted me off the books, I think, as an employee. So I was mm -hmm. able to negotiate being a contractor and the benefits financially that that would have for them. Mm -hmm. uh, so there would be some flexible time on their part rather than a fixed salary plus the, the payroll, payroll burden. Mm -hmm. And again, it's just trying to you know, circle around and look at something from the other person's side of the table and say, right. you know, what's going to work for them? And come out and say, what's going to work for us? And, and looking for a possibility there. And that's what they did. And I really appreciate that they were receptive to that. And I think I worked for them for about a year mm -hmm. uh, until we all agreed, okay, the objectives have been met. I'm on my own. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So after the soft ram, 
and then you decided at some point it's really time to kind of do your business full scale. Yeah. Take us through that story. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you might recall a little th something called the financial crisis. <laughs> oh, <coughs> is that 2008? Yeah, it was. It was 2008. It was rather big, though. It was. You noticed that, huh? Yes. So my husband and I were talking about, uh, as that was, uh, this, that was kind of setting upon all of us, um, mm -hmm. maybe it would be a good time for me to go back to school mm -hmm. um, to get my master's degree. And I, it was very important to me because personally when I went through my undergraduate, it was, I was, uh, I wasn't all together. I was not the very together person you see today, and it was a little rough for me, and I really didn't accomplish what I wanted to accomplish mm -hmm. in that academic experience. Mm -hmm. So it was particularly important to me, both personally and professionally, to go back for a master's degree. And so I applied to the University of Pennsylvania, and I was uh, allowed into a very special uh, kind of selective new program that they had. Um, for the Masters of Science in Organizational Dynamics, but mm -hmm. the specialty in executive coaching and organizational consulting. Mm -hmm. Right, so only 12 people were allowed into this program. Wow, so yeah. a cohort. Yes, right. cohort was an amazing program. So we decided because of the financial crisis and business was going to slow down that this would be a good time for me to go back to school. Uh, and so I entered into that program. It was transformational, mm -hmm. highly experiential. So it changed me as a person to kind of work on me. I thought it would be heavily academic, mm -hmm. which it was, but it was mm -hmm. also heavily personally transformational. Mm -hmm. And as I was going through that, unfortunately, I was struck with cancer. Mm -hmm. And as that experience is any kind of experience of illness for so many of us, mm -hmm. uh, that can change you. Right. So by the time I emerged from school, you know, my graduation, and I was finished with my cancer treatment, I thought, okay, let's live a, even a little bit bigger now. You know, I had the confidence and the knowledge and some of the contacts that I had acquired mm -hmm. during my master's program. Mm -hmm. I had that sort of live even more fully yes. you know, feeling that yes. one gets um, mm -hmm. after someone has been through some, sort of a crucible like that. Uh, I also felt that I was, teach, I was doing a lot of teaching and coaching others about leadership and teamwork and creating cultures, and I was starting to feel a little bit like a fraud. Like oh. a lot of teaching, talking, and coaching, not a lot of doing. Ah, okay. So the other okay. piece of that, kind of the okay. third piece that fell into place was it's time for me to lead. It's time for me to put some of these ideas in place and to get right there into the trenches next to my clients and lead my own company so I can better mm -hmm. identify with what they're doing, better identify with their challenges mm -hmm. and their victories, and also do some learning by doing. Mm -hmm. So those are the factors that influence my decision to, to grow the company. Very bold, mm. very bold. Mm -hmm. And and at one point you did the rebranding. I remember there was sort of Bracken and mm -hmm. then Bracken Leadership. That's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. Thank you for remembering yes, that. Yes. Feel good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, that's exactly what we did. When I made the decision that we would do that, then I hired a branding person and we, mm -hmm. you know, interviewed past clients and current clients and potential clients and all kinds of people about who I was and what was important to them in this kind of work and we uh, and we created a brand from that. Mm -hmm. uh, from there we, based on the brand, we recruited uh, consult consultants and coaches mm -hmm. uh, to work for us when the projects were right for them, uh, mm -hmm. to be included in the circle and included in the community and that's mm -hmm. where we built from. So when you look at your business now, who are your ideal clients mm -hmm. and why are they attracted to your service? Our ideal clients are, are people that are willing to learn with us. Mm. They're willing to take responsibility for their own learning, for who they have become and who they want to become. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I mean by that is the work that we do, and Fran, you do similar work, so you know that for us to do good work as a consulting company, we need a good client. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. We need yes. a good client. Mm -hmm. uh, and that means that they're open, mm -hmm. they're sharing, they're transparent, they're committed, they're being brave. Mm -hmm. All this work takes a lot of courage to mm -hmm. change and do something different or speak up or speak out mm -hmm. or follow where you're not even sure mm, this is not, maybe I shouldn't be following right now, mm -hmm. but I'm going to trust my leaders. Mm -hmm. You know, that all takes courage. Mm -hmm. So uh, any type of an organization that is committed to becoming a really positive place for people to work and to becoming a, a caring and wise citizen mm -hmm. right, of the community as an entity. Mm -hmm. That 
that's a phrase that I don't hear often. Mm. A caring and wise, committed citizen of the community. So citizen, community, mm. caring, mm -hmm. and as that entity taking on that, that mantle. Yeah, yeah. We don't hear it enough, and mm -hmm. I'm so happy actually to have this venue mm -hmm. to talk about it. I'm mm -hmm. currently the past chair of the Sustainable Business Network of Philadelphia, mm -hmm. which is an organization that uh, is a membership organization of businesses that value principles, triple bottom line principles. Right. So these are the kinds of companies that measure their bottom line not only financially, but in addition to that, they measure it in terms of how respectful are they of the environment, mm -hmm. um, what kind of social justice and people, how are they supporting that. So that would be things like paying a living wage, creating a positive and supported workplace, uh, perhaps um, donating back to the community or giving back to the community in some way through employee volunteer time mm -hmm. or through taking a percentage of their profits and donating it towards something. Listen, none of us is successful alone. Right. No person, right. no business, mm -hmm. and so I would love to see every business see itself more as a uh, as a contributing citizen, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That has right. gotten the benefits mm -hmm. of being a part of this city, this country, this whatever it is, uh, and also to feel a sense of well, it is actually my uh, obligation and my duty to mm -hmm. to give back and share. Mm -hmm. So that's very important to us. So we really love clients who have that same value or who are working toward that. Mm -hmm. Looking forward, because you've had the opportunity through various journeys, including cancer, um, to be challenged, to go through the crucible. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure the future holds different crucibles, but what's your vision for your company moving forward and the community, the caring community of entities? Yeah. I would. L I have a number in mind, which I, I won't say, but okay. I do. There is kind of a milestone sure. revenue number that uh, motivates me. I'm a. I'm an ambitious person, mm -hmm. and I'm That's a goal-oriented person. That's yeah. my sales background. Right. You got it exactly. Right. So I have a number in mind, and it's not uh, out of. It's not out of reach at this mm -hmm. point. And knowing me, of course, mm -hmm. when right. I get to that number, there'll be a new number. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it feels like it feels right. like the right stretch. And because mm -hmm. I never held myself as a person who was this entrepreneur and so on. There's, there's something very energizing uh, mm -hmm. about that and that feels like enough right now. And the vision um, thankfully feels similar to, to, to what we're having right now. So there's mm -hmm. a certain impact that uh, we would like to have on the clients with whom we work. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd like to have them see themselves in a different way and take responsibility in a different way, celebrate themselves and each mm -hmm. other. Uh, and we'd like to also um, uh, enliven Philadelphia and uh, add mm -hmm. a new vitality to some of the businesses of Philadelphia and have them be models, as we mm -hmm. said, as kind of citizen businesses right. of the city. Right. I'm a real Philadelphia fanatic. I, I, <laughs> you know. I hear it. And yeah. again, this global sense, um, you know, so many entrepreneurs start with just them, and then they realize they are the business, mm -hmm. and then they focus on the business. But looking past the business at the greater impact is important. Yeah. Okay. How can people get in touch with you, Colleen? Mm -hmm. They can write to me at my uh, email, which mm -hmm. is colleen at brackenleadership.com. Mm -hmm. They can visit our website, and I encourage that. They can learn a little bit more about us, including what our values are, a little manifesto that I wrote, which ah, sounds so grand, yes, yes. Uh, and learn a little bit more about that. And also, of course, the services that we have, different types of training, facilitation, executive coaching, uh, at our website at www.brackenleadership.com. Terrific. Mm -hmm. Now, I time is almost out. However, I realized that you did bring something, so I want you to show oh, okay. what you brought. Well, I hope not. It probably represents what we already talked about. But that's okay. Uh, It'll be reinforcement. All right. So yes. very quickly, I, I know that I mentioned mm -hmm. about courage. Mm. Uh, so these are three things that are uh, hanging in my office right now that are a constant reminder. Mm. So this is courage. These are some of the values in my own life and also uh, for our business. And that says practice courage every day. Day. That's right. Okay. And this one, can you read that for me? Create. Yeah. Ah, in so, a very creative way. Yeah, in a very yes. creative way. <laughs> I never saw myself as a creative person, mm -hmm. but what I recognize now is that I'm creating all the time. I'm creating a culture. I'm creating possibilities and creating solutions. So now I hold myself as a creative person. Mm. Courage, create. Mm -hmm. And finally, see? I don't know. It's not. I wish okay. it would be that neat, but life isn't always neat. <laughs> no, right? it's not. Uh, but this is, you can see, can you read More? any better? 
more, 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 right? More. Oh, I love it. More snuggles. Yeah. More. <laughs> more. Okay, I, I went to that. Okay, yeah, sorry. Good. Uh, more great. snuggles, more self care, yeah. more vulnerability, mm -hmm. more play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mm -hmm. am a person that is really working to get the most out of life, and that doesn't mm -hmm. mean always more doing. It mm -hmm. can be like more play or more, mm -hmm. but it can also be more peace, more serenity. Mm. more relationships, more time with old friends. Yeah. yeah. Colleen, what a wonderful way to finish up our conversation, which will not stop here. I hope not. Thank you. Thank you so much for being a guest on Significant TV. Thank you, Fran. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Significant TV, significant stories, significant entrepreneurs like Colleen Bracken of Bracken Leadership. Continue to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube.